Yes, track and field still on the agenda on the Sportsmax Zone. Jamaica's national senior and junior trials set to begin on Thursday at the National Stadium in Kingston. And with qualification for the Summer Olympic Games in Paris and the Under-20 World Championship in Peru, anticipation could barely be higher. Ace commentator Ricardo Chambers has taken up early residency on the stadium grounds. Let's join him live to see what preparation is like. Yeah, thank you very much, Lance. Well, I am by the Stadium East Field. This is where the athletes will warm up for competition over the four days of the National Senior and Junior Championships. As you pointed out, a qualifier for the Olympic Games set for July 26 to August 11. Of course, track and field begins on the 2nd of August and then the World Under-20 Championships in Lima, Peru from the 27th to the 31st of August. So two massive events for these athletes. And I tell you what, as you said anticipation yeah really high for this one because some amazing performances are expected over the next four days good news for the fans because on friday it will be free to enter the national stadium the bleacher section of the national stadium it will also be free on sunday and those two days are significant because on friday you'll have the final of the 100 meters you'll have the men's 400 final and you will also have the final of the 400 meter hurdles for men and women so some cracking events there and then on Sunday's final day you'll have the 200 finals you'll have the women's 400 final and you'll also have the 4x400 relay as Jamaica tries to get into a qualifying position for the Olympic Games in that event and talking about 4x400 relay I had the opportunity to catch up with a couple of athletes who are hoping to be part of the team to help help Jamaica qualify for the Olympic Games in that event. The first one I spoke with is Raheem Hales, a 23-year-old who um, is coming out of the NCAA system. He represents the Florida Gators. Very little is known about him, and so the very first question I asked him was about his background. I'm originally from um, the West, West Milan, a little town called Bethel Town. Um, I previously attended Maud McLeod High School. Um, where I, I left Jamaica um, in the 10th grade, I think the end of my 10th grade, and moved to New York, and where I, that's where I started track. So um, you were not doing track at all while you were in Jamaica? No, I did it a little bit, but it wasn't like official. We just did it for like say like a month, started training, and then I was I was leaving right after. So. I didn't get the chance to really settle in and really do it, do it for you. Yeah. So what made the difference in terms of you becoming serious when you moved to New York? I, I was always serious. I just didn't have the school and the resources. So when, when I went to New York, the resources was there. Um, the school was there. And I still wasn't good, but I just used what I had and I just became decent at it over time <laughs> yeah well you're definitely improving 44 8 personal best 45 3 this season yes, you sir. come into your second national championships talk to me about what the expectations are this time around um, the expectation is to make a, um, a loud introduction as I wanted to do last year but it didn't really happen so it's just the same goal this year to just introduce myself to the people and let them know who I am as you say they don't really know me so I just want them to know me just go from there. And quickly, how are you feeling? I mean, you're in the top 16, so you get a bye to the semi-final round of the competition. Um, just talk to me about how you feel about the format this time around and so on, given the special circumstances with uh, possibly having to run a 4x4 on Sunday. Um, I feel good about it. I'm healthy, I'm ready. Um, I would love to help the team to qualify for the Olympics. It's not an issue for me. I'm ready to run. I've been training all season, so... You know, I'm fit and everything ready. So it's not, none of it is an issue. And I just, as I say, I wanted to make a loud, a loud introduction last year and this is another opportunity to do it again. Yeah. All the best, Ray. Yes, I appreciate it. All right, yeah, Raheem Hales there. Um, 
made it to the final of the NCAA Division I Championships in the flat 400 metres and ran the first leg, of course, for Jamaica when they attempted to qualify in the Bahamas recently. The man he's been handing over the baton to for most of this season is Javon Powell, a 44-54 performer this season, NCAA bronze medalist over the one-lap event and, remember, ran a storming second leg for the Jamaica team um, in the Bahamas recently. And he spoke about how his season has been unfolding so far and how he feels generally coming into the Nationals. Well, for me, I'm not going to say it was a pretty good season in terms of I had some challenges with finding my pattern in the 400 this year. Um, the 44s was always there, but I think I wasn't executing good enough um, throughout my rounds um, each week, um, following up to all my races. But after NCAAs, um, leading up to that in the heats and whatever, I felt great coming in. So coming to the national trials now, I feel like I found the pattern that I needed all season. So, yes, sir. Um, what, if anything, did your performances at the NCAA championships tell you about um, yourself and where you are as an athlete in your overall development? Um, for me, I think is that I wasn't using my speed all season. And I think at the NCAA, that's when the speed really came out in the four by ones. And um, that made me feel like I'm ready to be a part of the pro world, per se. Yes, sir. Last year when you came to the Nationals, you didn't have the World Championship standard. Um, this time around, you have the Olympic standard. How much pressure does that take off you coming into this event, if any at all? Um, no, there is any pressure that take. Um, there is no pressure that came off coming in. It, it feels the same, to be honest. In 2022, I had the standard coming in. The objective was still to come and win. So it's, a, it's the same case. It's just to come and win. Yeah. And, you know, you had a brilliant run on the 4x4 team in the Bahamas. Um, the team missed the time needed to move into an Olympic qualifying position. Um, I want you to give us, give us an understanding of what, how the team felt um, following um, the failure, I guess, to get to that 259-12. Um, I think everybody was a bit disappointed. Not a bit disappointed, I would say we were disappointed because that's what we, we went there to do. To, we put our, our all, everybody went there and did their job and then to see we didn't get the time by 0.60, I guess. Yeah, it was, it was pretty disappointing in the, the way I was feeling. Yeah. And you ran a, a, an excellent leg. I mean, these days it seems as if if Javon Powell is not on the 4x4 four four <laughs> team, it is shorter, man. <laughs> but in terms of going um, into this weekend, no one, how do you feel about the format? You'll run only two rounds, you'll skip the first round, and then the expectation is that you're going to be back for 4x4 four four on Sunday. Well, for me, I think the, the two rounds is, is, is a good idea. I think I suggested that in my mind um, because I wanted to be a part of the 4x4 four because four, I would love to see Team Jamaica at Paris for 2024. So that, that's, the, that's the case for me. Yeah, Javon Powell there, he will uh, go in semi-final action of the men's 400 meters. That will be at 6.50 p.m. Jamaica time on Thursday, the opening day of the championship. The 400 meters, though, gets going at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning with the preliminary round. There are approximately 45 athletes in the men's 400 meters. The top 16 advance automatically to the semis, and the other competitors will go through the qualifying round eight of them to move through to the semi-finals to make 24 the championship starts on thursday morning at nine o'clock with the preliminary round of the men's 100 meters and there will be seven athletes qualifying from there to make it to 32 advancing to the quarterfinal round of the men's 100 which will be on thursday evening as well so lance and mariah the stage is very much set you know it's interesting usually on the evening of the national championship the stadium east field would be packed with athletes getting in final preparations this time around the venue is pretty empty 
part of that, as I understand, is that there are so many venues around the country now that ath athletes can utilize. They don't necessarily need to come to the stadium East Field. You have um, Jamaica College where the elite club trains. You have um, UWI where you have the Racers Track Club. Um, there is Calabar High School as well. There is a track there. There is GC Foster College. So a lot of options for the athletes. And it seems from what I'm seeing here that they, they are utilizing as many of them as possible. Maybe they were trying to stay away from me. I'm not sure. I feel that's what it is, eh, Lance? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, Mariah. I'm sure you would say that, Mariah. <laughs> what, I, what I want to get from you, though, Ricardo, the uh, J3A's organizers of the event and promoters of the event, because that's partially what they were doing earlier this week when they launched it, uh, labeled this likely to be the best ever championship. Now, that, to me, is a significant statement, bold even, because uh, so many of the top athletes don't appear to be where the fans would want them to be. But could it be that um, that statement was more made from a competitive standpoint because the competition is going to be as good as we have ever seen before? Yeah, you're very much spot on as it relates to that, Lance. From a competitive standpoint, that is exactly what it is going to be. But I think also the expectation is that a lot of athletes will break through at these championships. And um, that's always significant because there is a feeling that Jamaica's track and field is at a stage where it is likely to go through a transition, especially in the sprints on both the men's and the women's sides. And so because of that, I think that's a large part of the reason why this one is, 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 is being so highly touted and, and individuals, fans, are, are so excited. Plus, we shall not forget, this could be the last time that we see Shelley and Fraser Price compete in the land of wood and water. Think about it. She has said that she will retire after the Olympic Games. It is unlikely, given the injury issues that she's had, that she will return for the uh, 2025 season. And so if that is the case, this is going to be it. Whatever happens this weekend, this is the last time we could sh see Shelley and Fraser Price. Friday night could be the last time. I know she's entered for both the 100 and the 200 meters, but you just cannot be certain that um, she will turn up for 200, whether she makes the team at 100 or not. And so I think it is so important that we point that out. And I remember in 2017 when Usain Bolt was stepping away from the scene, the Racers Grand Prix was built as his send-off and the, the, the venue was jam-packed. I think Shelley and Fraser Price deserves a similar send-off. A lot has not been said about it, but I think it's very important for us to understand. And I really do hope that, especially on Friday night, the fans will turn out in their numbers, if for nothing else but to say a proper and deserved goodbye to the legendary Shelley and Fraser Price. Yeah, really well said there, Ricardo, because I think you're, you're onto something there because um, I, I can almost feel the excitement now on Friday night when Shelley and Fraser Price touches the track. Um, you know, there may be fans of Elaine Thompson-Hira and um, Sherika Jackson and so on that may be, you know, building up the vibes for their, their favorites, but no one could contest what Shelley and Fries, Fraser Price has meant to uh, not only Jamaican track and field, but global track and field. And uh, a, a final appearance for her inside the National Stadium is a monumental moment and um, a, a, a moment that I think should be supported by as, as many fans as possible. I agree with you. I agree with you, Ricardo. Yeah, in 2008, Lance Shelley and Fraser Price came to the national championship. She was an unknown. When she finished second in 10.85 seconds, many fans across the country said, Shelley who? Well, the world now knows. The rest, as they say, is history. Olympic champion in 2008, Olympic champion in 2012, Olympic bronze medalist at 100 in 2016, in 2012 as well, a silver medal at 200 meters. She's won the 4x100 with Jamaica, of course, at the Olympic Games, and a record five world titles at 100 meters, plus the 2013 world 200 meters title. She's won the 60 meters world indoor title as well. She is a legend, Lance. There is absolutely Absolutely no doubt about it. This woman is special. What this woman has meant to Jamaica's track and field, to global track and field, and in 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 and there were periods, especially after Usain Bolt, where um, we felt um, 
we'd, 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 we'd seen one legend step away from the sport and Shelly and Fraser Price has continued all the way. She's 37 years old to be 38 at the end of this year and she is still going strong. It will not be easy for her to make the team. Just dealing with the 100 meters alone, Sharika Jackson, the defending national champion, I think comes in as the favorite, but I have a feeling that a few youngsters will be coming really strong. I personally have my eyes on Tia Clayton, um, the twin sister of Tina Clayton, the two-time world under-20 champion. Um, and I tell you something, T Tia Clayton ran 11.13 and 11.12 on the same day. That was all the way back in March. If, if I know Stephen Francis' program, um, then I know that this girl is going to turn up in very, very good shape and uh, she is going to be in the reckoning. And there are a lot of others as well who come into this feeling that they will have what it takes to make that 100-meter team. On the men's side, that one is another cracker, Lance and Mariah. Oblique Seville beat Noah Lyles at the Racers Grand Prix. He looked on that day like he could have gone 9-7 and a lot of individuals have been seeing clips of the MVP athlete, Kashane Thompson, who has been looking spanking in training. And there are some analysts suggesting that he too could threaten 9-7 if his body holds up because we know he's had injury issues. Quote Stephen Francis has said he's in the form of his life. He's a 9.85 performer with limited training, with limited fitness and um, limited periods of being healthy. And uh, the court says he's been healthy since March and he's been training brilliantly. And from what we're seeing out of training, yeah, he does look like an absolute beast. And so, yes, Lance, there is so much to look forward to. I could talk about so many other events. The 110 hurdles, Omar McLeod is back. Hansa Parchment is the reigning Olympic champion. Rashid Broadbell, the young up-and-coming Commonwealth Games champion with so much talent. Yeah, there is so much to look forward to. The 400 hurdles for women where... Yeah. Russell Clayton is the world championship bronze medalist twice and comes in as the favorite. Let's see what she delivers there. The long jump with the world championship silver medalist Wayne Pinnock and the former world champion uh, Teje Gale. That's going to be another great event. The world indoor bronze medalist Kira McLeod is in that event as well. That one promises to be spanking. And I cannot leave out the women's 100 meter hurdles, likely to be one of the races of the championships with Akira Nugent, the former world under 20 champion. Under 20 um former world under 20 champion and former world under 18 record holder she's been in great form yannick thompson daniel williams the two-time world champion um Brittany anderson is coming back although um she hasn't looked in great form megan tapper is the olympic bronze medalist she's in the event as well a youngster like demisha roswell who has just come out of the ncaa system and from the MVP group, Janique Brown, who got to the World Championship um, final in 2019, yeah. and Amoy Brown, who just missed the team last year and ran 12-5 last season. That is a stacked field. I didn't even call Karika Hill, um, who, is the who is the current World Under-20 record holder and a World Under-20 champion from 2022 as well. That is such a stacked field. And I tell you, any woman who finishes outside the top three will feel hard done because several of those women, including those who will finish outside the top three, will feel they have legitimate hopes of winning an Olympic medal, but only three can go to Paris. Okay. All right, Ricardo, thanks for that comprehensive look ahead to the uh, nationals, uh, the Jamaica trials for the Olympics and the World Under-20 Championship as well. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the National Stadium in Kingston. We go to break and we'll be back to put the lid on the Sportsmax Zone show for this Wednesday. Yeah.